Rig components. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify and describe the five major systems of a drilling rig, the power system, the rotary system, the hoisting system, the circulating system, and the well control system or blowout prevention system. Drilling rigs are crucial components of both land-based and offshore exploration, each tailored to the unique challenges presented by their respective environments. On land, drilling rigs come in various types, such as rotary, cable tool, and percussion rigs, with their designs optimized for specific geological conditions. Land rigs vary considerably in size, lifting capacity, power generation, ability to circulate fluids, etc. These rigs are employed to extract resources like oil, natural gas, and minerals from beneath the Earth's surface. In contrast, offshore drilling rigs operate in marine environments and are further categorized into fixed platforms, jackup rigs, semi-submersibles, and drill ships. These offshore rigs are equipped to handle the complexities of drilling in deepwater locations, providing the means to tap into underwater reservoirs. The choice between land and offshore rigs depends on factors like the location of the resource, water depth, and economic considerations, highlighting the diverse and specialized nature of drilling technologies in the pursuit of global energy resources. The jackup rig is a movable platform that can be jacked up and down three or four supporting legs. It supports drilling in relatively shallow water depths, down to 400 feet. To move rig between close locations the platform is lowered down the legs till it floats then the legs are jacked up to the maximum height. The whole rig can then be towed by means of two boats. In long rig moves or across oceans the whole rig is normally carried on a huge carrier. Jackup rigs are the most utilized type of rigs nowadays. Recently, legs design has been modified to support drilling in deeper waters. Advantages it provides a fixed platform at low initial cost, it does not need marine risers or subsea stack, it can operate in soft bottom deltas, and it can withstand storms. Disadvantages It is difficult to tow, it has poor safety records, it has moving parts and jacking mechanism, and it is hazardous for going on and off locations. The semi-submersible is a floating drilling rig that is used to drill wells in water depths inaccessible to jackup rigs where water depths are greater than 400 feet. A semi-submersible rig is a drilling rig that is situated on a deck space that rests on several columns which in turn are attached to floating pontoons. Semi-submersible drilling rigs are considered to be the most stable of the deeper water mobile offshore drilling units. Due to their stability, semi-submersible rigs are also preferred in harsh offshore environments. Advantages It has a good safety record, it provides a relatively stable platform, it can function under more severe weather conditions, it can drill in deep water up to 2,000 feet, and it can be self-propelled. Disadvantages It requires marine risers and a subsea stack, it has a limited cargo capacity, and it requires support vessels. The drill ship is a special type of ships that is built for deep water drilling. It range in length between 200 to 450 feet. Its cargo carrying capacity and general mobility make it especially useful for drilling in remote areas. Advantages It has high carrying capacity, it can drill in remote areas, it can operate in deep water, and it is self-propelled. Disadvantages it requires a subsea stack, it is not as stable as jackups and semi-submersibles, and it lack of suitable risers to support drilling mud circulation between wellhead and drilling floor. The platform rig is a fixed installation offshore from which development drilling and petroleum production is carried out. The deck, supported by a steel jacket, carries equipment, accommodation modules, and a helicopter pad or helideck. It also supports one or more drilling rigs with associated equipment. Rigs are made up of various components. However this lecture is restricted to land rig components, most of these components are also found offshore. Jackup rigs and fixed platforms are very similar to land rigs. They are not subject to wave and tidal movements as being fixed in relation to the seabed during drilling operations. Therefore, they have no need for heave components or subsea stack BOP. The main components of drilling rigs include mast, 
Derek, substructure, V door, monkey board, crown, crown blocks, traveling block, hook, elevators, slips, tongs, and engines. Masts are assembled on the ground from large welded sections fastened together with pins. They may then be raised to the vertical position by using the rig's own power unit and hoisting line. Small masts may be truck mounted while some are telescopic. This rigging up time for masts tends to be less than that for conventional derricks. Rigging up time is the time spent to assemble a mast into the vertical position on site. It also includes the time to install the power unit, all cables and piping. Masts are used for lighter work. Cantilever masts, also known as jackknife derricks, are also common. There is no clear-cut distinction between a mast and a derrick. Often, the two terms are used interchangeably. To keep things simple we will regard a derrick as the framework tower type of support usually associated with oil well drilling. Typically derricks are assembled on-site bolting individual pieces together. The rigging up time for this method is of course, longer than for a cantilever mast. The substructure is the support on which the derrick rests. It also acts as a support for the heavy equipment on the rig floor. The top of the substructure varies in height from 10 to 30 feet above the ground. This clearance is provided so that wellhead equipment can be installed underneath the rig floor. The monkey board is a platform situated at a specific height from the rig floor, typically 60 to 90 feet, on which the derrick man works during trips. This platform also supports the fingers that are used to rack the stands of drill pipe. The V-door is a triangular opening on the front of the derrick to allow drill pipe and equipment to be picked up from the catwalk and brought into the derrick. The drilling rigs can be classified into five major systems. The power system, the rotary system, the hoisting system, the circulating system, and the well control system. Power system the power system on a drilling rig provides the power for the other main systems on the rig and other ancillary systems, such as electrical systems, pumps, etc. The system typically consists of a prime mover, the component of the power system that generates the raw power, and a means to transmit the raw power to the end-use components on the rig. The majority of the rig power is consumed by two operations. 1. Circulation of the drilling fluid. 2. Hoisting and rotating. These two operations could occur at the same time. The power consumption of the circulation system is essentially constant, wherein the hoisting the prime movers must be capable of handling highly variable loads at rapid acceleration over a wide range of speed and torque. Different types of prime movers or engines are available. Steam engines. These were the first engines used but have mainly been replaced by the following two types. Electric motors. Both AC and DC motors are in use. DC type is most widely used today because it has a wide torque and speed range and is easily controlled. DC powered rigs fall into two categories, one uses DC generators and the other uses AC generators along with silicon controlled rectification to produce the required DC power. Internal combustion engine. This is the most commonly used engine type due to the availability of diesel fuel. These engines are in fact inferior to both steam and electric motors. Their torque speed characteristics may be improved by the use of torque converters, but with a loss in efficiency. On a multi-engine rig the series of chains and clutches that connect the engines to the drilling equipment is called the transmission. Rotary system The rotary system on a drilling rig is the system that causes the drill bit rotate at the bottom of well bore. The rotary system is composed of swivel, kelly, kelly bushing, rotary table, slips, and tongs. The swivel supports the drill string and allows rotation at the same time. It also allows the passage of drilling fluid from the rotary hose into the drill string. The swivel performs a very tough job supporting a load that can be measured in hundreds of tons. This string could also be rotating at 200 or more revolutions per minute. Abrasive drilling fluids are often pumped through it at the rate of perhaps a thousand gallons a minute at a pressures that can exceed 3,000 psi. The swivel is hung from the hook by the swivel bale and is connected to the rotary hose by the gooseneck. 
Inside the housing just below the gooseneck is the wash pipe. This is made of the strongest material known to the industry. The wash pipe is stationary and is joined to the rotating swivel stem. Special packing to seal this rotating joint is contained in the stuffing box. The bearings run in an oil bath. The kelly is the topmost joint in the drill string and is 40 to 45 feet in length. It is commonly square or hexagonal. The kelly passes through the rotary table and transmits the table rotation to the drill string via the kelly bushing. The kelly bushing engages with master bushing either by having a square lower section or by four pins fitted into holes around the central opening. This transmits the rotations to the kelly. Through the master bushings, the rotary table transmits rotary motion to the kelly drive bushings and the kelly. They are also the connecting link between the rotary table and the slips which support the pipe during trips. The rotary table performs two functions. 1. It transmits the rotation to the drill string by turning the kelly joint. 2. It suspends the drill string weight during connections and trips. The rotary table is usually driven by a chain from the draw works on mechanical rigs and by its own motor on electrically driven rigs. Some are capable of speed of up to 400 rpm. A rotary table is defined by the size of its central opening, the largest being 37 and a half inches. This opening is fitted with a master bushing which is split into two parts. The slips are used to hold the weight of the drill string when it is not supported by the hook, during connections or tripping time. Slips are made of hinged sections with a single opening. They are placed around the pipe, their tapered outer sections fitting against either the inside surface, called bowl, or the master bushing, or against the inserts. As the pipe is lowered, the slip's tapered section causes them to close tightly around the pipe. The tongs are a pair of special type of spanners used to break out or to tighten the pipe connections. One of the tongs is called backup and is attached to the drill pipe and is anchored to the derrick structure by a chain. The other one is attached by to the connected pipe box or saver sub to be unscrewed and is connected via a chain to the cat head of the drawworks. The rotation power of the drawworks is used to break out or tighten the connection. On most modern rigs power tongs are used instead, they are hydraulically self-operated able to break out the connection without the use of chains. These are safer devices. Hoisting system the hoisting system on a drilling rig does the heavy lifting on the rig. It is used to raise, lower, and suspend the drill string and lift casing and tubing for installation into the well. The hoisting system is composed of crown block, traveling block, drilling hook, elevators, drilling line, and draw works. The top of the derrick is known as the crown, it is usually a small platform designed to carry the crown blocks. The crown blocks are the uppermost set of sheaves on which the drilling line is strung, most crowns of recent manufacture have from 4 to 6 sheaves. The traveling block is merely the traveling pulley, or sheave, assembly that is slung from the crown blocks by the drilling line. It connects the drilling line to the hook and swivel. The hook is suspended directly from the block. It is composed of a main hook which carries the swivel bale and two smaller offset hooks carrying the elevator arm bales. The hook can rotate in the axis of the traveling block, limited by a lock device, it is also sprung. Two elevators are hung from the hook on the elevator bales and are used for latching around the drill pipe in order to lift it. Elevators are of many slightly differing designs and sizes for use with different pipe sizes, drill collar, and casing sizes. They are not used during the drilling operation but are necessary for lifting the pipe during a trip. The drilling line affords a means of handling the load suspended from the hook during all drilling operations. Where dictated by high load requirements, premium grade lines with an independent wire rope center are used. The drilling line runs from the main drum up to the crown blocks and down to the traveling blocks. The line is slung several times around the blocks. From the crown blocks the line goes down to the drill floor where it is attached to the anchor. This section of the line is known as the deadline since it is stationary.
The pulley system in a land drilling rig plays a pivotal role in facilitating the efficient and controlled movement of the drilling line. Comprising a series of interconnected pulleys, this system is intricately designed to support the hoisting operations involved in drilling. The drilling line, a robust cable, is threaded through these pulleys, creating a network that enables the lifting and lowering of the drill string and other drilling components. The pulley system's mechanical advantage allows for the application of force with reduced effort, enhancing the overall effectiveness of the drilling process. Rig operators can manipulate the tension and speed of the drilling line through the pulley system, providing precise control over the descent and ascent of the drill string, contributing to the rig's operational safety and efficiency. The strength table of the drilling line serves as a crucial reference in assessing the cable's load-bearing capacity and durability during drilling operations. This concise table provides detailed information on the tensile strength, weight, and other essential characteristics of the drilling line, offering a comprehensive overview of its performance capabilities. Rig operators rely on this data to ensure the safe and efficient execution of drilling activities, making informed decisions based on the specific demands and constraints of each operation. The sheave efficiency table is a key resource for evaluating the performance of the pulley system on a drilling rig. This succinct table outlines the efficiency ratings of individual sheaves within the system, shedding light on their ability to minimize friction and optimize mechanical advantage during lifting operations. Rig personnel utilize this information to make informed decisions on sheave selection and configuration, aiming to maximize efficiency and minimize energy loss in the overall hoisting process. The sheave efficiency table serves as a valuable tool in enhancing the rig's lifting capabilities, contributing to smoother and more productive drilling operations. The top drive is a specially designed electric or hydraulic motor installed on the drill lines that replaced Kelly and Kelly bushing and it rotates the string as well. Using the top drive enables drilling to be carried out stand by stand instead of joint by joint. This reduces the number of connections to be made while drilling. Unlike the Kelly, top drive is not removed during trips. The drawworks is the control center from which the driller operates the rig. It contains the clutches, chains, sprockets, engine throttles and other controls that enable the rig power to be diverted to the part of the operations at hand. It also houses the drum that spools the drilling line during hoisting operations and allows feed off during drilling. A brake is used by the driller to control the speed of the drum while operations. Drawworks are commonly designated by horsepower and depth rating. Circulating system. The circulation system on the rig is the system that allows for circulation of the drilling fluid or mud down through the hollow drill string and up through the annular space between the drill string and wellbore. It is a continuous system of pumps, distribution lines, storage tanks, storage pits, and cleansing units that allows the drilling fluid to fulfill its primary objectives. The mud pumps of the circulation system and the draw works of the hoisting systems are the two largest draws on the power from the power system. The circulating system is composed of mud pits, mud pumps, Kelly hose, drill string, solids removal equipment, and degassers. After drilling fluid has been processed by the solids control equipment, it passes into the return pit that is connected sometimes by other pits to the suction pit. The suction pit is directly connected to the pumps, allowing the mud to circulate through this system. Between the return and suction pits, the mud is constantly agitated by electric paddle mixers and mud guns. Chemicals are added to the mud via special hoppers. The suction pit may also contain a small slug pit used to mix special heavy mud that may be needed when tripping or to mix other small specific volumes. The pits in use are referred to as active pits. All pits are equipped with valves so that their contents may be dumped or transferred easily in between them. Two or three pumps are usually found on rig site, their function is to circulate the drilling fluid at the required pressure and volume. The type of pump used is a reciprocating piston pump. Pump design varies, but the basic features are common. Pumps may be classified on four features. 1. Number of cylinders. Normally pumps have either two or three cylinders and are known as duplex and triplex respectively. 2. Pumping action. 
Double acting pumps means that both sides of the piston are used for pumping i.e. the piston is filling one side of the cylinder while fluid is being discharged on the other side. Usually duplex pumps are double acting. This type of pump can be easily recognized by a valve systems at both ends of the cylinder. On single acting pumps only one side of the piston is used for pumping, that is, the cylinder is then filling or discharging. Triplex pumps are usually single acting recognizable by having a valve system at one end only. 3. Piston Stroke This obviously is related to the output of the pump. It is fixed and cannot be changed. The longer the stroke of the piston, the greater the pump output. 4. Cylinder Diameter or Liner Size Each cylinder is equipped with a removable sleeve or liner. A pump, although a fixed stroke length, has a whole range interchangeable liners of different diameter available, allowing for different pressure-slash-volume ranges with changing hole conditions. Orally, the smaller the liner diameter, the smaller the volume pumped on each stroke but as the liner walls are thicker, more pressure is available. There are usually two to three pumps on a drilling rig. They are always of the positive displacement type. In other words plunger pumps rather like a bicycle pump. Two pump types are available, duplex, double acting, or triplex, single acting. A duplex pump has two cylinders. Each cylinder has two suction and two discharge valves. As the piston moves through the cylinder it is discharging mud in front at the same time as mud is filling the cylinder behind. The triplex pump has three cylinders with each cylinder having only one suction and one discharge valve. The cylinder is filled as the piston moves back and is discharged as the piston moves forward. For one complete cycle of each piston a triplex pump discharges one cylinder full of mud. In a duplex pump however, because it is double acting, two cylinder volumes are discharged for every cycle of each piston. This figure shows the pump action for each type. Pumps are commonly rated on the horsepower they transit. Pistons are sometimes known as swabs. The discharge of the pump is fitted with a pulsation dampener and connected to the standpipe and rotary hose, Kelly hose, through the mudline via the mudline manifold or standpipe manifold. The Kelly hose, or Kelly line rotatory hose, or mud hose, connects the standpipe to the gooseneck and is flexible but strong enough to hold high pressures. These hoses may be pressure rated up to 12,000 psi. The drill string includes all the components used to drill below the Kelly or top drive, and it can include the following components. 1. Drill pipe and tool joints. The drill pipe furnishes the necessary length for the drill string and serves as a conduit for the drilling fluid. The drill pipe joints are hollow seamless tubes where the tool connections are separate components and are attached to the pipe at both ends to complete the manufacture of one joint. Tool joints are of thicker outer diameter to withstand the torque applied by tongs to tighten the connection. The drill pipe joints are normally made in approximately 30 feet or 9.5 meters lengths. 2. Heavy Weight Drill Pipe, HWDP This is the same as a drill pipe but with a smaller inner diameter and longer tool joints. Because of its wall thickness, its pound per foot weight is greater than an ordinary drill pipe. Heavy weight drill pipe is inserted as a section between the drill pipe section up and the lower drill collar section to serve as a transition section between the two of them, this gives the drill string the required elasticity. 3. Thread Protectors These are either made of metal or plastic and fit on both ends of a threaded pipe, box and pin ends, to protect the threads from corrosion and mechanical damage during storage or transportation. Obviously, they must be removed before use. 4. Drill Collars These are heavy walled, spiral and large outer diameter steel tubes. Their function is to supply the desired weight on bit and to allow the lighter drill pipe to remain in tension. The spiral grooves are to minimize the surface of contact between hole and pipe reducing the risk of getting stuck. This also helps the drilling fluid to flow up the annulus in case of tight hole. 5. Rotary Bits these may be classified into three general types. Drag bits, these have no moving parts but drill by the shoveling action of their blade on the formation. Roller bits, first designed by Howard R. Hughes in 1909. 
These may have originated from one to numerous individual rotating cones. Three cone bits, tricone, are the most widely used in the oil field. The length and spacing of the teeth depend on the type of formation that the bit is designed to drill. Hard formation bits may have tungsten carbide inserts instead of teeth. Various types of bearings are in use. Specially designed jet nozzles are set on the bit to direct the drilling fluid to produce a high-velocity fluid stress on the bottom of the hole. So-called conventional bits were forerunners of roller bits but were open-ended without jets. Diamond bits, these are designed to drill by the scraping action of diamonds set in a steel matrix. This type of bits is normally used in hard formations where long bit life and the subsequent reduction in trip time are desirable. 6. Stabilizers These are run between the drill collars and are of a blade-type construction. Drilling fluid can pass freely between the blades while the outer edge of the blades contacts the wall of the hole and holds the drill collars firmly centered in the hole. They do exactly as their name implies, they provide stability to the bit and collars. This is important as it improves bit life, in addition to keeping the direction of the hole under control. 7. Reamers These usually have the same diameter as the bit and are run a little distance above it. As the bit wears out it tends to decrease in diameter and consequently start drilling a smaller hole. The reamer's function is to cut the hole out to full size behind the bit. 8. Under reamers Used for drilling or opening out a hole below or restriction such as imposed by the blowout preventer assembly. They are run above a conventional roller bit having their cones on collapsible arms, enabling it to pass through a narrow opening. When required, the arms can be opened, usually by the drilling fluid pressure, and a larger hole is thus drilled. The solid removal equipment includes the shale shaker, desanders, and desilters. The shale shaker is a vibrating screen used to separate the drilled solids from the drilling fluid. The screen is mounted on a spring or rubber-supported chassis, which is vibrated by means of an eccentric rotating shaft. Screens of different mesh size are available. Mesh size is being measured by the number of openings per square inch. The screens are sometimes mounted as a pair, using screens of different sizes. In double-deck shaker, mud returning from the well core comes down the flow line and into a surge tank, sometimes known as the possum belly or shaker header box, this allows a smooth flow of mud onto the screens. The shakers are usually situated over a sand trap, which is a narrow pit with sloping sides terminating in a valve, it is used to trap fine sand that may pass through the shaker screens, this pit must be dumped out periodically. The desanders and desilters remove particles from mud, which were not removed by the shakers or the sand trap. This separation is accomplished by utilizing centrifugal force. The equipment is essentially a series of cones mounted on a manifold, mud is pumped into the manifold and enters the cone. The mud swirls round the inside of each cone, this rotating action causes the lighter fluids to come to one center and rise out of a hole in the top, whereas the heavier soils go to the outside of the cone and sink down it and out of an opening in the bottom. These units are operated at low pressure, 30 to 40 psi, but can handle high volumes, typically 250 gallons per minute per cone. The difference between desanders and desilters is mainly in the size of the cones. The smaller the cones the smaller the particles that it separates. The degassers separate the gas that may be trapped in the drilling fluid. The principle of operation is essentially the same even though the design varies. The mud is either passed over a series of baffles or caused to swirl around in a bowl, both actions cause the mud to break up resulting in the greatest surface area possible for the gas to break out. In the swirling action the mud is spread very thinly over a surface. In addition to the increased surface area, some degassers apply a slight vacuum, this aids in the separation as the gas or air bubbles expand and break out of the fluid more easily. Well Control System The well control system, or the blowout prevention system on a drilling rig, is the system that prevents the uncontrolled, catastrophic release of high-pressure fluids, oil, gas, or salt water, from subsurface formations. The main function of the blowout preventers is to furnish a means of closing off the annular space between the drill pipe and casing. Most preventers are either hydraulically or pneumatically controlled with manual operation available as a safety precaution. 
blowout preventers are rated according to their working pressure and their inner diameter. There are many design variations of BOP, however, they fall essentially into two categories, annular preventers and ram preventers. The annular type BOP, sealed by closing a circular packing element around the drill pipe, this element is made of rubber one most types will also seal the annulus with virtually anything or nothing in the bore. The annular BOP is composed of latched head, wear plate, packing unit, opening chamber head, lifting shackles, opening chamber, closing chamber, and contractor piston. The annular BOP rubber element is a vital sealing component in the blowout preventer, BOP, stack. Positioned within the annular preventer, this flexible rubber element forms a dynamic seal around wellbore components, effectively containing pressure during drilling operations. Its pliability allows it to adapt to various pipe sizes, preventing uncontrolled fluid releases and enhancing well control safety. Rigorous testing ensures its reliability in challenging downhole conditions, contributing to the overall efficiency and security of drilling operations. The ram-type BOP derive its name from the hydraulic cylinders and ramshafts that move the two sealing ram blocks. Unlike annular preventers, this type will only seal around a specific pipe size. To accommodate different pipe sizes the ram elements are changeable. A set of rams and annual preventers, when assembled, is known as the blowout preventer stack, commonly referred to as the stack or BOP. The ram type BOP includes BOP body, piston, piston rod, rams, and sealing rubbers. The blowout preventer stack arrangement is a critical component in oil and gas drilling operations, designed to ensure well control and prevent uncontrolled releases of hydrocarbons. This arrangement involves the strategic placement of blowout preventers in a stacked configuration, typically comprising annular and ram type preventers. The BOP stack serves as the last line of defense against well blowouts by sealing the wellbore in various scenarios. The arrangement is carefully engineered to provide a systematic and reliable response to different well control situations, enhancing safety measures in the exploration and production of hydrocarbons. The drilling rig choke manifold is a vital assembly that plays a central role in controlling and regulating wellbore pressure during drilling operations. Positioned near the rig floor, the choke manifold is comprised of valves and chokes that manage the flow of drilling mud and fluids. This arrangement is essential for adjusting pressure levels within the wellbore, preventing blowouts, and ensuring the safe execution of drilling activities. Rig personnel use the choke manifold to fine-tune the wellbore pressure by adjusting the choke valves, enabling precise control over the circulation of drilling fluids. The choke manifold's strategic placement and functionality are integral to maintaining well control and safeguarding the integrity of the drilling process. Thank you for your attention. Please hit like and subscribe to our channel in order to help us produce more content like this one. See you in the next video presentation.